Thick brush is what the New England cottontail needs to survive and flourish. But as wild shrubs and thickly settled forests diminish because of development, so are the New England cottontails. Here you go. The New England cottontail is New Hampshire's only native rabbit, and it's in danger of being wiped out. The New England cottontail just represents a part of New England's landscape that has been disappearing based on our land use, how we steward it. It's a story about letting things go and not manicuring them to trees and fields. Heidi Holman is a wildlife biologist with Fish and Game, the agency that heads up the New England Cottontail Initiative, working with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Natural Resource Conservation Service, as well as other New England states to boost the bunny population. One part of the plan, zoos in New York and Rhode Island breed the rabbits and give several dozen a year to New England states. Our goal for the initiative is to release 500 rabbits a year. And that's really challenging. For some reason, we can only get 50 from a zoo, and two zoos, maybe 100. This rare breed of rabbit needs thick woods to find food, raise their young, and keep safe from predators. Unlike the eastern cottontail, that's the bunny you can find feasting in your yard all the time. The New England breed has a darker coat and smaller, close-set eyes unable to spot a predator from approaching it until it's too late. So all of the shrubs that protect it, the bark and the buds of those shrubs are their primary nourishment in that deep snow pack of winter. These large gated pens are located at the Great Bay Wildlife Refuge at the Peace Trade Port. The forest inside the pens mimic the cottontail's natural habitat. This large pen is about 10 acres. On this damp, rainy day, Heidi and her team check out the rabbits who have spent the last several weeks in friendly captivity. Some of them are bunnies that have been transported recently from the zoos. Others are rabbits fish and game have trapped. By spending time in this gated habitat, the cottontails are learning how to survive in the wild. So that means when they come out of the zoo, they're so used to their keepers. They don't know much about foraging. And so they have a chance for a few weeks to roam around and just get used to the sounds. I mean, these bird sounds are new. It's startling to them. Every rabbit they find is checked out. They are gently coaxed into large white cloth bags. Don't worry, these bags don't hurt them. They actually protect their fragile eyes from the daylight. Grab the bag, grab the bag. There you go. The rabbits are weighed in grams. A thousand. Their ears are checked to see if they have already been tagged and numbered. Yeah, three, two, one, five. So when every individual comes out of the zoo, they have an ear tag that tracks who its parents are. Also, when we capture any wild young that are born in the pen, they also get an ear tag. More rabbits are collected at a second location at the Great Bay Wildlife Refuge, including newly born bunnies. The ear tag then is tracked with either their DNA sample that, again, tells us who their parents are, confirms that they're New England cottontail 100%, um, that our breeding is successful, and then we use that into the future when we release them to track reproduction at the release site. It's determined some of these rabbits are not ready to be released and are free to go back into the pen, where they are closely watched. We've been having coming up about once a week to give a little bit of supplemental feeding uh, to the rabbits and also to check the game cameras we have sit it, or throughout the pens to make sure that there's no predators getting in. The rest will be released in a wooded area in Summersworth known as Mally Farm. We separate siblings. We look to maximize the broadest amount of females or males represented. So we're managing the captive population as well as managing what we're releasing in the wild to have the best outcome. 
At Mally Farm, one of the bunnies is too cold and young to be released right now, cuddled in Brett's jacket. I can uh, turn the heat back on, too. That's a release today. Mally Farm is a 100-acre property owned by Summersworth. The city council was reluctant at first to allow Fish and Game to use the land for the New England cottontail. There are hiking trails here and a community garden. But Scott Orzenkowski and Angela Fico, who sit on the conservation committee, eased the city's concerns. We uh, did a lot of education uh, with residents and, um, and the city um, talking about the benefits and um, assuring people that there wouldn't be damage from the rabbits. And the community garden, you know, was a big concern because I think people were thinking of eastern cottontails like you see at Prescott Park um, and they thought they'd come out to the garden and eat um, where these rabbits will not. Then the time comes. We all get a chance to release the bunnies. Once the first crate is opened, the bunny ponders freedom for a few seconds, then he goes for it. Hey. My little bunny took its time to take that leap. Hi. What did he think? He thought, I'm out of here. There you go. More bunnies race into freedom faster than our cameras can catch them. The effort to save the New England cottontail is not just up to wildlife experts. People can help by creating or maintaining habitats on their land like this and allowing fish and game to release the New England cottontail in hopes of saving this small animal with the mighty impact. So if the New England cottontail disappears, likely other species will disappear that maybe we haven't monitored just yet.